Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Frozen Lady. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Magic Detective. Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. You know, Blackstone, of all magicians' tricks, I think escapes and vanishings are the most interesting to outsiders. They seem to be, yes. I wish you'd tell me more about them. Oh, you're snooping on forbidden ground, Don. Those escapes are magicians' secrets. Yes, I know, but maybe that's why they're so interesting. I've told you about several of them already, Don. I know you have, but like Oliver Twist, I still ask for more. Oh, oh I know a story you've never told him, Blackstone. Oh? Which one is that, Rhoda? Remember Genghis, the Swami? I think you mean the pseudo-Swami. Well, what's the story, Blackstone? Well, there was a Mrs. Reginald Van Antwerp, a society leader. She opened the little theater on her estate for a benefit a little while ago. And the main feature of the evening was an exhibit by each of several well-known magicians. It was a contest, really, to see which magician could perform the most startling trick. The program had gone along uneventfully until the act before mine. Rhoda and I were standing in the wings watching the act. And now, nice people... The Swami Genghis. Tonight, I will show you a trick that will mystify you all. But I must have help. Is there a young woman in the house who will assist me? Oh, come now. There must be some young lady who will allow me to freeze her in a block of ice. It will not be painful, I promise you. Uh, Emma, come here, my dear. <laughs> Genghis, this is my daughter, Emma. She'll be glad to assist you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, young lady, you will sit on this stool. <laughs> That's right. Now look straight into my eyes. Yes, into my eyes. Hypnotism, huh? It looks like it. What do you think he's going to do, Blackstone? He'll freeze her while hypnotized into a block of ice. The ice will freeze, they'll chop it open, and she'll have vanished. It's a good trick. I'll say it is. I am giving you this drink, this magic drink. Mm -hmm. Swallow it all. Mm -hmm. That's right. Now you are going to sleep to sleep. I don't like that. I don't like hypnotism much myself, but then... Oh, look, Blackstone, she's unconscious. He's lifting her and putting her in that... Well, uh... it's a coffin, Blackstone. Now that's just a trick, Rhoda, to build the suspense. A very effective one. Look how the audience is taking it. You can't hear a sound. Golly, they are still, aren't they? Now Ooh. I will allow water to run into the sarcophagus of the living dead... The sarcophagus is filling, filling. Were it not that the beautiful maiden were unconscious, were her spirit not out of her body, she could not survive the ordeal. Golly, that's quite a act, Blackstone. Mm, he's doing it very well. It's amazing I haven't heard about him before. Yeah, that is funny, isn't it? You know most of the magicians. And now, the test. I shall start the freezing apparatus. And soon the sarcophagus will be a solid block of ice with the maiden frozen within. She is freezing. She is freezing. The maiden is freezing into a solid block of ice. The ice is forming around her heart. <coughs> I say, I can't let my daughter go through with this. It's too dangerous. Stop. Mrs. Van Antwerp, please, before it is too late. It is too late. What do you mean, too late? You have broken the spell, Mrs. Van Antwerp. The spirit of your daughter was hovering between two worlds when you cried out. 
Your scream has broken the spell. Quick, help me, someone. Chop open the block of ice. I'm going out there, Rhoda, and help. So am I. Break open the cake of ice. Stand here by me, Rhoda. This may be serious. I'll need your help. You mean this isn't part of the act? Well, if it is, it's one of the cruelest I've ever witnessed. She's gone, Mrs. Van Antwerp. You have murdered your daughter. I murdered my daughter. Her spirit is doomed to hover between the two worlds forever. Unless I can call her back. Oh, call her back. Call her back. We must have seances. We must work. It may take years to undo the work you did in a single second. It may take years. Or it may be impossible. Oh. Take my gun out of the bag out there, Rhoda. Go down into the room directly under this one and hurry. What will I do then? You'll know when you get there. Hurry. Right, Paul. I will call to the spirits and see if somehow, someday, they will be kind and release your child. I will establish contact with the spirits. Speak to me, O oh spirits. Speak. Speak. We must have silence, my dear lady. Complete silence. The gods do not care for crying. Spirits of the outer darkness, send back the child you have taken from us. Send her back to us. Send her back. Stop. I beseech you to return this Stop. spirit. That's enough. Oh, Mr. Blackstone, please, Genghis says must be quiet. Your child is safe, Mrs. Van Antwerp. You don't understand me. Grab that man. Don't let him escape. Stop him. Oh, Hold him. Stop him. My only chance to call back my daughter is... Rhoda. Yes, Blackstone. Is she all right? Yeah, she's pretty badly shaken from the fall, but she's all right. What do you mean? You see, Mrs. Van Antwerp, I am a magician, too. <laughs> Quite a story, Blackstone. Isn't it? Every time I think of the sound of that Swami's voice, my blood curdles. But tell me, Blackstone, how did you call Mrs. Van Antwerp's daughter back from the spirit world? I didn't. You mean you were just uh, fooling her poor mother? Oh, of course not. Well, then well, how? Well, it's very simple, really. An old magician's trick. The daughter hadn't vanished at all. But when the block of ice was chopped open, she was gone. Yes, yeah, she was gone because she'd never been in it. What do you mean? The Swami had put her in the coffin, flooded it with water, frozen the water, and the girl had vanished. She'd vanished before the water was put into the coffin. The bottom of the coffin was a trap door, you see, that led her down into the room below. She wasn't even hypnotized. That drink of water the Swami gave her contained dope. You see, Blackstone had done this trick often. He knew what was supposed to have happened. But why did the Swami pull the gag about her spirit being between two worlds? Yeah, I bet he's wondering that himself along about now. What do you mean? Well, he's got plenty of time for wondering. Why? He's in jail. This trick of his was a very fancy kidnapping and extortion racket. He'd banish the daughter, you see, and then hold many expensive seances, paid for by the heartbroken mother, to dry and bring back the girl. Mm, well, that's one of the cruelest ideas I've ever heard in my life. It certainly is. Well, I'm awfully glad that this was another mystery that you could solve, Blackstone. Yep, it was another mystery solved by magic. And now for another trick, Blackstone, one that our listeners can perform after you tell them how. All right, uh, tell me now, what kind of a trick would you like? Why not show us a hat trick? Uh, that is, one without rabbits. Who ever heard of a hat trick without rabbits? <laughs> Why not make it a card trick, Blackstone? Well, now, just to please both of you, i tell you what I'll do. I'll show you a hat trick with a pack of cards. That sounds swell. Here's the pack of cards. Yeah, and here are two hats. Which one do you want? I'm going to use both. First, we spread the pack of cards along the table like this, uh, face down. Mm -hmm. What next? I want you each to take a card, but don't let me see those cards. Oh, well, I'll take one from over here at the left. And I'll take one from the center. Good. Now, while you're looking at those cards, I'm going to put the rest of the cards in a hat. Now, here it goes, the whole pack. Well, what do we do? Remember our cards? Yes, and show them to each other if you want. But don't let me see them. Uh, you bet we won't. Now, I take the hat with a pack in it, and on it I set the other hat. And now, I want you to put your chosen cards back into the pack. Well, how do we do that? The pack is inside the two hats. Well, just hold your cards face down and slide them between the two hats. Oh, like dropping a letter in a mailbox, That's then. it. Well, here goes mine. And uh, here's mine. Now, uh, pick up the hats and shake them so you mix the whole pack. Chosen cards and all. That's a fine idea. Well, here goes. Well, let me try a hand at that mixing done. Oh, here you are, Rhoda. 
Now, if you find those cards, Blackstone, you will be good. I'll find them and very easily. Now, hold the hats high, Rhoda. Then remove the top one. There you are. Now, I reach into the lower hat and... Yes, here's somebody's card. And here's the other. Well, my card was the six of spades. And mine was the nine of diamonds. Well, take a look at the two cards I drew. The six of spades and the nine of diamonds. Both right. One chance in 52, and he did it twice. But how Well, let Rhoda think it over, Don, and in a few minutes I'll be back to tell you how. I suppose you two want to know how I picked the cards from the hat. I'll say we do. Teddy has me baffled. And thousands of our listeners are probably trying the trick right now, wondering how in the world it can be done. All right, Don. When you and Rhoda were looking at the cards you took, I put the rest of the pack into the hat, didn't I? That's right. There was something else I did, only you didn't notice it. Well, how could we? We were looking at our cards. Well, it wouldn't have mattered if you had watched me. The thing that happened took place inside the hat. Here. Look at these cards, Rhoda. Why, the pack of cards is bent. That's right. I bent them when I put them in the hat. But our two cards were not bent. That's right. They weren't. And that's how I found them. And all you had to do was reach in the hat, find the straight card, and you had them. That's the trick. Remember, two cards are taken first. While people are looking at them, you put the pack in the hat. And bend it. Uh, I mean the pack. Yes, you bend the pack. Then put another hat on top. And let the people push their chosen cards between the hats, then shake the hats to mix the cards. Exactly. Then reach in the hat and find the two straight cards. It'll fool them every time. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you like that trick. And now, until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. <laughs> with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of The Hooded Rider and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. Magic Detective, starring the world's greatest magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Hooded Rider. Right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform. Reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Blackstone, the magic detective. Uh, stand a little farther away from that cabinet, Don. Me? Well, why? But that's the cabinet that I vanish from every show. You wouldn't want that to happen to you. Well, you materialize again, Rhoda. Yeah, but me, I'm smart, I am. And anyway, I know the secret. <laughs> well, Rhoda, why is it that you always vanish out of cabinets and things and Blackstone never does? Don. Oh, uh, Oh, uh, hello, Blackstone. I'm talking about me, Don. Well, I, I didn't hear you come in. He does that sometimes. First he isn't there, and then poof, there's Blackstone. He used to give me the creeps when I first worked for him. <laughs> well, Blackstone, I was just asking Rhoda why it was always she who did the disappearing acts and never you. Well, there was that time at the convention, Rhoda. Do you remember? Convention? Hmm. Oh, of course I remember that. I was never so darn scared in all my life. 
You pretty near vanished for good that day, Blackstone. Well, hey, let me in on this. It sounds exciting. Oh, almost too exciting. Well, what happened? You see this cabinet over here, Don? Uh, that one over there? No, uh, this one. Oh, oh yes, I see it. That's funny. It, it has paper sides. They're not even painted to look like wood or anything. Well, that's part of the trick. Well, what do you mean? I'd get into the cabinet with its obviously paper walls and then let my assistant shoot at me. And then when the sides had been shot to ribbons, he'd get out of the cabinet unharmed. Good grief. You know, that's one of the most spectacular tricks I've ever heard of. Yeah, and rather dangerous, too. Well, what's the secret, Blackstone? Do your assistants use blanks in their guns? Well, that's what Big Ben Westminster thought. Big Ben? Who's he? Well, that's part of the story. Tell Don about it, Blackstone. Rhoda and I were playing a convention out in the southwest, and while we were there, I ran across the trail of a gambling ring. Blackstone was just on the verge of cracking the ring wide open, and the gamblers knew it. They'd been sending us threatening notes. And that night, waiting to go on for our act, Rhoda was nervous. Blackstone, I, I wish you wouldn't go on tonight. Those threatening notes mean business. Mm, so do I. But you'll be so defenseless out there on the stage. Anyone could take a shot at you if they wanted to. Don't you worry about me, Rhoda. I'll be all right. I'll keep my eye on the audience and make sure there's no trouble. But what about when you're in the paper cabinet for your hooded rider act? You can't watch the audience then. No. I'll be out of sight of the audience during that act. You mean the audience will be out of sight. They can see the cabinet with you in it, and you can't see them. If anything happens during the act, it'll happen then. Not if you cooperate, Rhoda. Of course. What do you want me to do? Just this. Now, listen carefully. Oh, golly, there's our cue. We've got to go on. I know. We've got to hurry. Now, this is what I want you to do. Now, Blackstone will disguise himself as the hooded rider, hide in that paper-sided cabinet, and allow himself to be shut up by his assistants. Blackstone, look at those guys up in that stage box. Isn't that Big Ben Westminster, the head of the gambling ring? Yes, that's Big Ben himself. They're here for a reason, Blackstone. That's right. They'd like a chance to kill me. Blackstone! Don't worry, Rhoda. Everything will be all right if you follow my instructions. Oh, I will. If they try to shoot at me, this will give me the one thing I need to hold Big Ben. Are you all set, Rhoda? All set. Oh, golly, I hope this works. <laughs> Hey, look, Ben, when are we going to take a shot at that guy? My trigger finger's etching. It's etching, it's etching. A oh, hold of this. We've been holding it too long. That guy's been doing too much snooping around, and I don't like it. Well, neither do I. Now's our chance to settle him once and for all. How? Well, Blackstone will go off stage and change into his hooded rider costume. How do you know? I've seen this act before. I don't leave nothing to chance. What are we going to do? No! Hey, listen. If any member of the audience would like to come up on the stage and take shots at the cabinet with my men, they're welcome. <laughs> Hear that, Hokum? Well, tonight we'll take them up on it, but not on stage. What? No one wants to come on stage? No one in the audience has brought along their favorite shooting irons? We've got ours. I'll say very well. My own assistants will have to serve as the fighting squad. Now, if you will allow me a few moments to change into my hooded rider costume, I will be back to mystify and baffle you. Then Blackstone will come back and get into that cabinet, see? And his stooges will shoot at him. Only they'll shoot with blanks. Well... Well, Blackstone, inside the cabinet, will punch holes in the paper so it looks like the guys are using real bullets, see? Only this time, he won't have to punch no holes. There'll be some real bullets. You mean ours? That's right. Hey, that's swell. On account of the blanks that are being shot, nobody will be able to guess where the real bullets come from. That's the idea. Oh, but here he comes. Yeah. He's going into the cabinet. Yeah, they're shutting the door on him. Now the stooges are lining up. Getting ready to shoot them phony. There they go. All right, now, Ace. Let her rip with the real ones. That does it, boy. Come on, let's scramble before the trouble starts. Hey, that guy's coming out of the cabinet. 
Look, he's alive. Well, he, he can't be. You pumped enough lead in him to kill ten men. But he is, I tell you, look. Well, let's get out of here. Come Just on. Just a minute, Westminster. Well, here I am right in the box with you. Drop that gun, Ace. I've got you covered. Hey, you can't be here. You're down on our stage. You're, you're, you're dead. No, I'm very much alive. Let's all take a little trip down to the chief of police. Perhaps he can explain it to you. Gosh. Impressed, Don? Well, I certainly am. But I can't understand how you did it. Oh, it's very simple, really. Well, that's what you always say. Come on, Blackstone, give. Well, Rhoda and I left the stage together when I was supposed to change into the hooded rider costume. Mm -hmm. And then you came back alone. That's where you're wrong. Just as Big Ben was wrong. Well, how do you mean? I didn't come back onto the stage at all. Rhoda did. She put on my costume, which disguised her, and went through my axe for me. It was she who stepped into the cabinet, leaving me free to go up into the box and confront the crooks. Simple, isn't it? Well, that part is. Now you've explained it. But I still don't see how you could let the crook shoot real bullets into that cabinet. All the bullets were real. Those of my assistants as well as those of the crooks. You mean those bullets are all real? Every one of them, Dom. Let's show him the trick, shall we? Right. Uh, step inside the cabinet, Rhoda, but leave the paper door open. Okay. Now, see, Don, I press this button and... Why, it's a steel flap like a... Well, like an inner door swinging out from the side of the cabinet and blocking off the front. That's right. That's why I can invite anyone who has a gun to come up and shoot with my men. The cabinet is bulletproof. And Rhoda knew the trick. Yes. You can come out now, Rhoda. And so, another mystery was solved by magic. Well, what do you think of that trick, Don? Why, it's marvelous. And now, Blackstone, uh, do you know another trick that I can perform myself? <laughs> no, that one isn't exactly practical for home consumption. <laughs> Hardly, but uh, here's one that is. What kind of a trick are you going to show me this time, Blackstone? A handkerchief trick. You need a special handkerchief? No, Rhoda. Anyone will do. We'll use yours. Hold it by one corner, Rhoda. Is that right? Yes. Now lift the lower corner up so you are holding both corners like a loop. Hmm. Is that it? Exactly. Now... Shake the lower corner downward. There you go. Only what's supposed to happen. I'll show you with this handkerchief of mine. Hold one corner, lift the other, and shake. Well, nothing happened. Uh, not on the first shake. That's only one. Uh, he goes. Two. And three. Well, look, Don. Well, Blackstone, there's a knot right in the corner of the handkerchief. How the words you do that? Three shakes and there you are. Try it with your own handkerchief. One, two, three. But no knot. I'll try it. One, two, three, and shake. There's still no knot. Oh, what's wrong with this black stone? Well, you have to know the secret, Don. Let Rhoda keep on trying it, and then I'll be back to tell you how it's done. One, two, three, and shake. No knot. One, two. Well, that convinces me, Blackstone. Convinces you of what, Rhoda? That there's some deep, dark secret about this trick. Something you haven't told us. Well, that's true of every good trick. Well, this is a good one, so let us in on it. Very well, I will. I didn't really shake the knot into the corner. Well, if you didn't, how did it get there? I tied it beforehand. But we didn't see it. No, because the corner in which I tied the knot was the one I held in my hand. Like this. Oh, I see. Your hand hides the knot. Right. But how does the knot get to the lower corner? Very easily, Rhoda. I raise the lower corner to the hand that holds the upper. Yeah. And I shake the lower corner once. That's right. Then I raise it again and shake it. That makes twice. Yeah. I raise the corner a third time. Yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead. Only now I keep that corner. I hang right onto it. What I shake is the upper corner. Three. And there's the knot. You switched the corners on it. I'll say you did, only we couldn't see it happen. Of course you couldn't, because my hand was hiding both corners at the time. It's so simple that no one will suspect it. So that's how it's done. That's how it's done, Rhoda. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. <laughs> Hey,
with us next time when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of the Phantom Intermezzo and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. magician Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of the Phantom Intermezzo. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform, reveal the guarded secrets of the world's greatest living magician. Blackstone, the magic detective. I was uh, reading a book last night, Blackstone. Oh, and hooray for you. We'll skip that crack road of Brent. As I said, I was reading a book about ghosts. Did you ever see a ghost, Blackstone? No, Don, I never saw one, and I doubt if anyone ever did. I thought I saw one once. Remember, Blackstone? Uh, yes, Rhoda, I certainly do. I don't think I've ever seen anyone turn so pale. Except Yamamura. I thought he was going to faint. <laughs> Who is this Yama Moro? Uh, he was a medium. You know, one of those call the spirits back from another world, boys. <laughs> well, maybe we better give her the story, Blackstone. Don looks kind of puzzled. I'm plenty puzzled. Well, Don, I had a telephone call a few weeks ago from a Mrs. Covington Moss, a wealthy widow who lives in a funny old house outside of town. Rhoda and I thought we were to do a show for some party of hers, so we drove out. It was dusk as we arrived on the doorstep, and the butler let us in. Mrs. Covington Moss is expecting us. Very good, sir. Right this way. Thank you. I'll tell Mrs. Covington Moss that you're here. Very well. Hey, Blackstone, there's something funny here. Uh, what do you mean, Rhoda? Well, there's no party. What do you suppose she wants us for? To give an act just for her? Well, that doesn't seem likely. Gee, I wonder what the idea is. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Mr. Blackstone? Yes? Oh, thank you so much for coming to the aid of a poor, puzzled woman. I uh, beg your mm. pardon? Well, I couldn't think for a moment just where to turn for advice. And then I thought of you. Oh? Uh, my lawyers who handle my estate are so unsympathetic about my spiritual activities. Have they uh, refused to advise you on your problem? Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. They advise me against everything. But I didn't feel they were being at all open-minded. Uh, perhaps you'd better explain. Of course. Uh, would you please come upstairs with me? Certainly. This room was the study of my dear nephew, David. He passed on a year ago. See. But he comes back to see me sometimes. <laughs> What do you mean? He prays for me. Oh, he was so sweet. He knows that I miss him, so he lets Yamamuro bring him back to pray for me. Uh, who is this Yamamuro? Oh, he's a wonderful man. He comes here every night and calls David back for me. Is Yamamuro a medium? Yes. He has great power in contacting those in the spirit world. You pay him for contacting your David? Oh, no. Yamamura wouldn't take pay. <laughs> Why, he's a gentleman. <laughs> I fool him, though, and he never suspects. So what do you do, slip 50 bucks into his coat pocket before he leaves? How did you guess? Only you're wrong on the amount. I give him $100 uh, for his work, you know, to help him carry on. <laughs> How did you guess? I'm psychic myself sometimes. Oh, really? How interesting. Uh, Rhoda, please. Uh, how does David manifest himself? With uh, wraps on the table, like this. Those two wraps mean yes, and one, like this, means no. Hmm. <laughs> Clever of David to think of that way of 
signaling me, wasn't it? Uh, very clever. Yeah, an original, too. Uh, David always was original. Uh, what about this playing for you? Oh, yes, the playing. Well, every night before David goes back to the spirits, he plays to me on the accordion. Isn't that sweet? Just as he used to play to me when he was alive. He plays right here at this table, of course. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, David never could play without walking up and down. And evidently being dead hasn't changed his habits at all. He plays all over the room. And sometimes, even from that linen closet over there, with the door shut. Well, that's quite a trick. Oh, but it isn't a trick. <laughs> My lawyers say it is, but they can't explain it to me. So, I don't listen to them. Uh, what did you call me in for, Mrs. Covington Moss? I want you to find out if this could possibly be a trick. I know you can't, of course, but I want to have some proof to take to my lawyers. Then, they'll let me have the money. More hundred-dollar bills for Yamamura? Oh, no. Yamamura is going to start a foundation to bring back spirits, and I'm going to contribute $50,000. <laughs> Fifty? Well, well, my lawyers feel that Yamamura isn't quite all that he might be. So, I've asked you here to prove that he really does call back my David. Uh. There he is now. Uh, David? Oh, no, Yamamuro. Uh, you'll stay and watch the seance, Mr. Blackstone? I think it would be better if Rhoda stayed. I'll look around and wait till it's over. I'll give you my verdict then. <laughs> Now the lights are built. We will call forth our David. Oh, this is spooky. Oh, I must ask for quiet, please. Complete quiet. David, are you here with us? David. Oh, he's here. Hello, David. Are you feeling quite well today? No. Oh, an attack of your old hay fever, perhaps? Oh, my poor dear. Uh, but you are happy, aren't you, David? Oh, I'm so glad. Now, will you play for us, David? It sounds as though he's gone into the closet, doesn't he? Yes, it does. You will play? Oh, he's back again. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Sweet David. Now, play from the closet, David. I want Miss Brent to see how you move around. It sounds as if it were coming from the closet, all right. What did I tell you? Well, what's the matter? What are those noises? Where is David's stop playing? Yamamuro, what is it? Oh, I do not know. Something is going wrong. The spirits are... The door's opening. The door from the closet. And a figure's coming out. A white figure. David. It's my David. Heavenly David. It's a ghost. Speak to me. David, speak to me. Keep away, please. Keep away from me. Yes, I'm Keep... Amamora. You have summoned me once too often. You will not let me rest. No, no. No, let's go of me. Let go of me, David. No. You mustn't do that. Let no, go no. of Yamamoto, David. Clark, no. son. The ghost is choking the medium. Cough it up, Yamamoto. Come on, cough it up. <coughs> That's better. Where's Blackstone dressed as a ghost? Right, Rhoda, turn on the lights. Where is the Blackstone? What have you done? I have proved that your lawyers are right, Mrs. Covington Moss. This man is a fake. Well, look, there on the table, there's a tiny harmonica. Oh, tell me, Mr. Blackstone, tell me what you found out. <laughs> Tell me, too, Blackstone. Well, I've never believed in ghosts, John, so I knew that Yamamoto's trick, whatever it was, was a trick. Mrs. Covington Moss had said that very often the music came from the linen closet, so I thought that perhaps there was a phonograph installed there. So he hid in the closet before the seance began. But I realized that there was no mechanical device secreted there, and then I knew that the trick was simple ventriloquism. Yamamoto had a tiny harmonica in his mouth. By opening and closing his lips, he made the sound rise and fall as though near or at a distance. And Blackstone came out of the closet dressed in a sheet and scared the daylight out of that medium. Yamamuro knew that he had no psychic powers whatsoever and was more scared than anyone else at the sudden appearance of the ghost. Oh, except me. That's right. Except Rhoda. 
I had to choke Yama to keep him from swallowing the inch-long harmonica. That's all there was to it. So another mystery was solved by magic. Well, uh, what trick have you for us, Blackstone? Well, this time it's a little mystery. Suppose we try it with Rhoda first. Okay, how do we begin? Well, now here's a piece of note paper and a pencil. Uh -huh. Just fold the paper so that you can tear it into three strips. You mean fold about a third of the paper down? That's right. And then fold the bottom third up. But uh, don't tear it yet. Yeah. yeah, that's done. What next? Now take this pencil and write your name in the center of the paper. Then write two other names, one above yours, the other below. Each name in a separate section of the paper? That's the idea. All right. Mm, written Rhoda. And above that, I'll put Harry. And below, I'll write Don. Now what? Tear along the creases. Then fold each slip of paper in half. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Here the slips. All folded. Now give the papers to Don and let him shake them in that hat. Uh, hold the hat high, Don. Okay. There it is. Above my head. Very well. Now I reach into the hat and try to catch the magician vibration. What I'm after is the slip of paper with Rhoda's name on it. You have only one chance in three. Oh, no, Rhoda. With the vibration working, this trick can't miss. Here's a slip of paper from the hat. Open it and read the name. But, but it's my own name, Rhoda. I told you it would be. Now it's up to you to figure out how it's done. And if I can't guess... Then I'll be back to tell you. How are you making out? I'm not. Well, let's have Don try it. Here's another piece of paper. Fold it in three, Don, and write your name in the middle. And uh, two other names, top and bottom. That's right. And this time, we'll let Rhoda shake the hat. Uh, there you are. And if you get the right paper this time, I'll... I have it already. Open it, Don. Whose name's on it? I, uh... Why, my own. Say, this trick can't miss, can it? No, and I'll show you why. Here's another piece of paper. What I want you to notice is the edges. They're all smooth, aren't they? Yeah, of course. Now I fold the paper across two times, tear along the creases. Notice the edges of these slips? Oh, yeah, the middle one has two rough edges where you made the tears. That's right. But the other two slips each have one smooth edge, don't they? Of course, the top and the bottom. But it was the middle strip on which you wrote your name. So when I reached into the hat, all I had to do was find the slip with the two rough edges. And it was the right one. Yes, it was the right one. You can find it every time. I hope you like that trick, ladies and gentlemen. And now, until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. Next time, when the world's greatest living magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of The Vanishing Pearls and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest living magician. Blackstone.